Hello and welcome to the Gamescast, and welcome to Microsoft Flight Simulator 10, uh, more commonly known as uh, FSX. And today, we're going to be flying this. Oops, wow, wow, my, my camera went spastic. That's it, the Boeing 707. Yes, the Boeing 707, it actually, um, its sort of production was sort of 19, no, yeah, 1957. Uh, ending in um, uh, 1979, I believe. Um, so yeah, 1957 to 1979. Uh, so it's a pretty long-serving aircraft, and it's a very manual aircraft. It's a lot more manual than anything I've ever flown before, but it's quite exciting. I'm going to show you how basically how to fly it and uh, how fun it is. It was pretty cheap to make actually this thing. It's uh, about, I don't know, about five million dollars or something. That was in 1955 that was. I'm reading this just off a list of uh, facts and stuff. Of course it is a Boeing of a 707, you've probably already realised that. And the shape of actual plane looks a lot more like a Boeing rather than an Airbus. Uh, that is in fact a, uh, no that's not a Boeing. That, in fact, is a Boeing 747. So, um, yeah, there you go. Um, so, yeah, but that looks nothing like that. That's actually a Boeing 737 there, anyway. I don't know, an A320. But anyway, uh, this is it. So, it's a British Airways livery. The 707-300-ADF... No, ADV, sorry. Uh, it's a pretty fast beast. It's about 600 miles an hour, which is uh, uh, 520 knots in old school, or uh, if you're European, it's 960 kilometers. Sorry, I have a slight cold. I'm just pretty much recovering now. But yeah, um, there, here it is. So I, we're just gonna. Uh, all passengers have been loaded on. I just thought I'd start up like this because it looks cool. If I'm gonna be completely honest. Uh, we're going to um, close uh, a nose comb, if you like. The main door, we're going to uh, take away the... No, we're not. We're not going to take the wheel clocks away yet. Um, we are going to close the pilot's windows. going to take off the plugs. And we're going to take off the wheel clocks as well. Oh, and of course... Uh, the passenger, uh, the rear passenger door, and the external power. We don't need that. Um, <coughs> sorry about that, guys. So, yeah, let me just uh, show you a couple of the uh, views I have. So, we've got this view, and this view of the other wing. And the wings flex quite a lot, so you'll see uh, that it'll look slightly different when we're actually on the uh, thing. Also, we forgot to close the cargo door. Hopefully, um, I've just opened it. But that is the wrong cargo door. I just closed. Right, there we go. And why isn't that closing? That should close. Wait for it. There we go. <laughs> Very smooth, Hamish. Uh, but this is just my uh, taxi view. So, actually, this is uh, gives me a good chance to show you what airport we're at. We're at Heathrow. Um... Yeah, so we are at Heathrow. Uh, we have the UK 2000 scenery. This is absolutely phenomenal. Next level stuff, this. Uh, for some reason, my easy dock's being really strange. Ultra laggy. Now, I'm running about 20 FPS on the ground, which is okay, to be fair. But, I'm, yeah, running about 20 FPS on the ground. But, um, but yeah. And these clouds, you may already have wondered. That actually Rex... Uh, what's this? Rex... Uh, Essentials Plus Overdrive. Now, uh, I got Rex Essentials, and it's about $50 or something. 50 or, uh, 50, uh, yeah, $50. Getting confused. Um, and you get quite a lot. It's a, uh, it's a flight plan system. It's, a, uh, it, it's everything. It's amazing. It's a weather system. I'm not actually using Rex's weather. I'm actually just using the default FSX one, because I... I couldn't quite get it to work, and I'm not sure why. I just need to look into it. Um, but yeah, so these custom clouds, custom taxiways, they look a bit different, a lot more detailed. Uh, different parking bays, you can't just see it here because this is actually a, this is a cargo. 
Uh, these planes here happen to be cargo planes. Um, so if we are over here, you see lots of cool oil stains. The reasons I'm not over there in a ramp is because there's actually a slight glitch, and I think it is to do with the plane, not to do with the scenery, where you start getting black flickering, and it basically makes it horrible to fly. So that's why I'm starting over here, which is quite good, because that means uh, we're by runway 9, which is very good, actually. Um, anyway... Uh, let's get into the aircraft. I, I was going to say, uh, yeah, basically custom uh, textures. Uh, it's real time. I don't think we'll arrive at sunset. We potentially might do. Uh, as as uh, from the clock, you can see it's quarter to three or twenty to three, which would it, which is indeed twenty to three. Such a uh, for uh, two forty three. But anyway, we're not going to fuss too much about that. We're just going to set up the aircraft. It's not going to cold and dark state, by the way, guys. It's very much loaded up. Um, I've done most of the settings on the um, engineers uh, panel, apart from just uh, switching a couple of these um, sort of little circular disc things. I don't want to say knobs, but I've just said knobs, I'm not trying to say knobs. So I've ended up saying knobs about five times. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> anyway, I've done most of the setting up. Uh, the engines aren't yet started, as you can probably hear. It makes quite a sound, this machine. It's like Pratt & Whitney engines. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, let's just... What are we going to do? No, I completely... Uh, let's get some light into this aircraft first. Let's turn on these lights here. I'm going to turn on this one, otherwise I think the whole thing goes red, and I don't like it. So, uh, there we go. All the lights have turned on, means we get some nice effects down here. Uh, we're slightly laggy at the moment, purely because where we're based in the airport, on the ground, ultra-high detail UK 2000 airports. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I know you're not meant to, but we may as well turn on our taxi lights. Uh, are these taxi lights too? Yes, I believe they are, because there's... Four Landing lights, no. God, it's qu quite different. Uh, how can you tell it's a Boeing? You might be wondering. Uh, it's such an old aircraft. How would you actually be able to tell if it is a Boeing? Basically, the parking brake switch. Every single Boeing... Now, if my easy dog doesn't go strange, I'll try and show you guys. Yeah, it's not too bad. You can see how laggy it is. Let me just change to a suitable view. Now, we may not make this, guys. I don't know what it is with Easy Dock. Anyway, you can see here for parking brake, every single Boeing has this parking brake. This is a Captain Sim Boeing 707. Not that there'd be any one at any other one anyway, but still. Um, so yeah, you can see it, it looks like a Boeing. This is how a Boeing should look. From that view, you could tell it's a Boeing. You can tell it's an old Boeing. Uh, some of you familiar with the 727 will notice some uh, big similarities between this and the 727. Um, uh, down here is a little bit different. Uh, this thing here is actually your INS, and it's a. Uh, I can't really work it. There's, if I go up to my views, I don't know if you guys can actually see it. If I go to, what is it, new view, go to this thing here. This is actually an add on I've had to download to get this to work, but uh, it doesn't really work. Uh, or I can't be bothered to get it to work. Uh, so we're not going to use that. We're going to use VOR, good old-fashioned VOR, what they would have used in the day, as well as this. Uh, this thing actually is... Um, that's actually... Uh, that part of a, This is a weather radar. Then you put your various inputs, and then you have up to nine different uh, uh, waypoints, if you like. Uh, we're just going to keep it on zero. We have no... No use for it. Uh, we're just going to take uh, our radar onto uh, normal mode, actually, not standby. Uh, you'll notice it go start. It'll start to go a different colour in a second. Uh, we are go not going to change with this yet. We are going to put on to view our localizer very fairly soon. Um, right then, what do we need to do? Uh, right, let's just set up, flick some switches. Alpha. Now. Oh, thank luckily Easy Dock hasn't went spastic. It is going. I've got some insane lag. It might be the air, airplane. Uh, the, there are some bugs with this aircraft. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail. Uh, you may be wondering what I'm just doing now. I'm just pushing in all the buttons that I pushed out. Is that pushed in? No. Uh, just going to double check that all of these have been pushed in. 
Oh, uh, these ones up here don't actually work, so. I mean, otherwise, every single one of these pretty much work. Oh, no, they don't. Do they? I don't know. Uh, oh, shit. Hang on a minute. Oh, uh, well, for some reason, I've lost the ability to press all these buttons. Not that it actually matters. Uh, anyway, every one of these buttons should work, <laughs> and they all have a fun function. It's just at the moment I can't actually push them. Uh, at least that one works. Anyway, <coughs> uh, let's go to the engine ears section quickly. Uh, we are just going to turn that, that, and that like so. Uh, we're going to allow the fuel. Uh, let's just test these. Good. Working. Um... Right, good. Right, now that's done. Uh, let's just turn on the engines now. I've got them all set up, ready to get turned on. They should just start turning on one by one, uh, basically automatically. Say that. Is that... I think it should come up in a second. Yes, there you go. Right, um, let's talk about our route. We are in Heathrow, uh, E-G-L-L. Uh, that's Echo Golf, Lima Lima, and we're going to uh, LFPG, uh, Paris, uh, Lima, Foxtrot, uh, oh crap, what's P? Papa, why do I not know that? Uh, Papa Golf, so yeah, Lima, Foxtrot, Papa Golf we're going to, and uh, we're taking VORs, apart from the end, and I'm going to kind of do it manually, I'm just going to do it right via heading, from what I know should work. You've seen all these lights come into life as we've now got engine power. Um, so, first of all, uh, we're going to set our course. Uh, no, let's set our first waypoint. It's a little bit laggy at the moment as the engines start to boot up. A hundred uh, 117.0. So, let's move that to 117. Whoops. Point zero. I'm still very much getting used to this. I'm just going to turn that onto normal mode. We can't do anything with this at the moment, but we will do fairly soon. Uh, this thing here is quite cool. Uh, autopilot's not on, so it's kind of irrelevant at this moment. But this is your altitude. It's a very basic autopilot, but it works. And that's the main thing, but it works. Um, just double-checking. The parking brake is still on. That would be a disaster if it wasn't. Our course, um, so these are our various instruments. Uh, these, this is our vertical speed. This is our uh, speed, our ground speed in knots. Uh, then we've got... Uh, uh, oh, <laughs> here we go. This one here. Now, this was uh, slightly complicated. Uh, complicate? Confusing. Because here, it'll say something like 700 and something. Now, I'm not sure if that's in kilometres or... Ah, no. I've just realised what it is. That's a mark. Right, okay, I, I got this plane yesterday, so I, I um, bought it and downloaded it yesterday. It's also got all the expansions, so I've got the 300B um, uh, and C, and I've also got the military versions. Uh, as actually, no, it's the E, no, what is it? It's a V30, V130, uh, and something else, E E53, something like that. I'm not entirely sure, I actually forgot. I didn't just bark because I felt like it. I did bark because I got the uh, extra uh, 300. It gives you a slightly more upgraded aircraft, basically. So it takes it from the 1950s and puts it into the 1970s uh, or the late 80s, I guess. Our course is actually um, 153 for our first VOR waypoint, uh, which is roughly south. Taking a little while. Uh, you can see all our engines I have, have they booted up? Yeah, they just booted up, we're just go. oh shit, what was I, what am I doing, 153, here we go. Uh, there we go, we just do that like so, we're just going to stick the heading on, uh, on 90. The reason I'm going to do that um, is for our end going into Paris. Um, so yes. Uh, you can see the weather radar has started up. We've got some... It shows some clouds here. It's very much scattered at the moment. I haven't actually brought up the meta. I'm not entirely sure what it is. I could find out, but I can't be bothered. But you can see we've got some scattering here. 
Uh, to our um, south, uh, so, yeah, southwest, we've got some. Uh, it's a little bit more cloudy. If we go outside of the aircraft, and look this way here, you can see it's very much more cloudy than over here. It's a little bit clearer. So um, we're doing a good job there, VR uh, radio. Uh, right then, right, well, we're pretty much ready to take off, I believe. Uh, let me just double check a couple of things. Um, so this is our pitch trim here. This is what we'll move, do to basically go up and down when we have our autopilot enabled. Uh, we have it on either this switch or I can't switch it because the autopilot is not on yet. There you go. So I have it on that switch there that holds our altitude. We have it on this one here that basically means that we're free to go up or down. Uh, let's just turn that off. Uh, anyway, it's always good. Let's just check the engine fire warning lights. Uh, which camera have I got that set to? This one here. Hopefully, they should light up. And look, yes, they do. Okay, right then. Uh, this yeah, this thing here is actually part of this thing here. We may as well just stick that on standby. Not that we'll do anything. Uh, that thing there is actually part of that thing there. We're also going to put it on the nav localizer. Oh, nope. Sorry, apologies about that. We're going to put that on to VOR. Again, not that this really does too much. Uh, the reason it's not doing too much is because we haven't actually set this up. So, it's, uh, it's again, it's a bug with the plane. Uh, 1,200. Uh, just going to set our altimeter. I may have already done that. Let's just check. I press B. Oh, yeah. No, I didn't. A few of the dials changed so you can see our Q&H here. Now, is that a 1? I believe that's a 1. 1033. Three. And uh, 30.21 is uh, frequency. That's it. I got there eventually. Uh, okay. Right then. Um, let's taxi. Uh, we are ready to taxi. Uh, again, let's just check. Uh, we're going to take off a parking brake. We're not going to. Uh, yeah, let's start to taxi. Now. Uh, why, why did I set up my course? I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a tutorial as well as a flight. Um, so uh, I have to have a look how far we are into the video. So you've probably just lost sound now. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Yeah, sound will come back in literally two seconds after I've just set this up. I hate not knowing various data and stuff. Right, there you go. Oh. How long have we been recording? 17 minutes, right. You probably lost sound again, which you did actually lose sound. Um, okay, oh, for fuck's sake, right, I'm getting really annoyed now. I'm messing up because I'm trying to get just the right, just the perfect, right, there, 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 that's it, that's it, you've got sound, you're going to have, no, fuck me, no, you're not. <laughs> oh, dear, right, okay, here we go. Um... <coughs> <coughs> I'm using a flight sim commander. <coughs> it's going to guide me through my various VORs. I actually used a VOR planner. I didn't just uh, stick it in as a flight plan. Just wanted to make sure that we're nice and level. Got another Boeing there. On the left hand side, again, British Airways. Much more modern, though. That's a 737. Have the 737, if you think about it, it's not that modern. I'm just gonna slow. Actually, no, we're not going that fast. I thought we were going pretty fast. We're actually not. We're only going 22 knots. We can go 30 in the UK. So, normally in the, uh, in the rest of Europe, it's 25 on, on taxiways and stuff. Uh, let's set our flaps up, actually. We're gonna put them onto 14. Yeah, very strange number. As far as flaps go, uh, I talked to you in literally two seconds. I just want to concentrate with these taxiways. We're going to take a slight left and then a right. We're not going to take a continue this turn if you like. Uh, we're just going to take. I'm not sure. I think this is like a left. And uh, again, we're just going to slowly turn. And now the wheelbase. Which I'll show you in just a second. You can turn much later than you think, because the wheelbase 
Again, I'll do this as we're holding shot for the runway because there's still another couple of things I need to go through and double check. Uh, that light is flashing. Let's just turn that off. I'm so happy that I was able to turn that off because otherwise that would be extremely embarrassing. So each recording is going to be about 30 minutes or so. It's about been about 20 now. So now we're going to take a right hand turn. So we're currently on Sierra. And uh, well, we're just staying on Sierra. If we took the one before, it would be uh, Sierra Bravo 7. If we were to turn right uh, at that uh, previous turn, but we didn't. Uh, we need quite a long runway actually. It takes 11,000 meters, this needs to take off effectively. Uh, it's a very old plane, remember, guys. 1950, 1957, relatively recently after the war, by about 10 years. But, um, well, a little bit more actually, about 12 years. But uh, this is the first. Uh, it's not really the. I would say it's the first proper commercial flight. It's just the first sort of uh, very heavily travel flight. Over a thousand were made. So it's, uh, yeah, uh, so a, a thousand were made compared to the aircrafts of today where hundreds of thousands, or not, it's not quite hundreds of thousands. Oh, let's just uh, hold short here. Right then, let me just show you what I mean about this wheelbase. Hopefully I can get a... Right, it's behind the captain. If the wheel was here, then we would turn earlier. Uh, no, le yeah, earlier. We turn earlier. But because it's here, we actually turn later. It's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's pretty easy to, uh, to understand, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. You probably know that anyway. Uh, but still, uh, it just means we have to turn a little bit later, and as you can see, I'm not in the best position. Let's just, uh, check our flap so quickly. And they are on 14. Flap settings for this is actually 14, 25, 40, 50. And 50 being 50 degrees rather than flaps of today only go up to 30. Well, I say only go up to 30. They go up to 30. Uh, we go on to the outside of the aircraft and go to the wing view. You can just see the flaps here. On modern day aircraft, they kind of extend out and they look all very cool. They're not just two little levers here. These are actually Pratt & Whitney engines, these things here. So they are uh, Pratt & Whitney engines. Um, now, n nowadays, roll, uh, roll, you've got Rolls-Royce, GE, or GE Aviation. Rolls-Royce and Pratt & Whitney are still the main engine suppliers. Oh, especially for Boeing planes. Uh, Airbuses, I don't fly too many of, so I'm, I can't be 100% sure. Uh, we are ready to take off, though. Hopefully, we're not going to get too much lag. So, let's so put our engines on about 50%. Uh, the turbo lag, thrust lag, I guess, it's not turbo lag, it's fairly extreme. At the moment, we've got absolutely horrific FPS. Trust me, guys, as soon as we gap into the air, it'll be, well, we're skyrocketing to about 40. <laughs> But uh, it's quite a cloudy day, and I can confirm that by looking out the window. I don't actually live anywhere near London, realistically. I live more, in the, more by Birmingham. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's not a million miles away. It's about 75 nautical miles away. Nautical miles, by the way, guys, isn't actually the same as uh, normal miles. Anyway, uh, let's take off. We're going to put them at about 60-ish percent or 65 percent and let them stabilise. Stabilised and full throttle. Here we go. I read out our speed. Uh, our V speed's about 160, which is a uh, our rotation is about 160, which is much higher than uh, than like uh, <coughs> most normal aircraft. We're at 80 knots. We just passed 80 knots. It's actually at 100 now. Now we're just going to push down just a little bit because this plane has a tendency to try and uh, take off too early. I mean, you scrape the back of the end and it becomes extremely unsettled as a car comes across the runway. Another car comes across the runway. Holy fuck. Right, then let's rotate. At 160 now. 
170, 180, 190. See how much of a runway we needed there. Positive rate of climb, landing gear up. Just going to take out, we're going to make a right hand turn. Our flaps can also go up. We're going to reduce the engine speed. Going to allow a much better bit of climb first and a slight improvement of the F FPS front. Uh, we're going to hit autopilot on. Oh. Establish the localizer. Now need to go up. Which we're doing nicely there. Still trying to go down. Stupid. Of course, I I can. I'm still getting very much getting used to this uh, this aircraft, and uh, it turns out that actually I completely forgot to uh, uh, just try and concentrate. Actually, uh, come on. There we go. Flaps are up. A uh, bit of a better bit of climb now. There we go. Uh, now, why is this not working? Oh, this guys, I didn't quite intend this to happen, and I'm not entirely sure why it isn't working. I'm almost definitely doing something wrong. I'm actually having to manually pull up now. Right then, let's try and get a relatively stable rate of climb. Engines onto about 200, only going 200 knots at the moment, 210 actually. But right, then. B, set our altimeter, and again it's trying to pull down. Now, it's not a bug with a plane, but it is a bug with me not knowing how to fly the plane. <laughs> However, we're on a pretty good uh, course, though, at least. I'm pretty sure this is going to have no impact at all. Still trying to go down. I don't want to manually. So look, that's fine. We're going to try and manually do the height now, which is fine, I guess. Uh, we're on a good course. Uh, 
uh, you can see that. So, ah, right. So this little green light here, this is our uh, localizer. Uh, it's telling us that we're on the um, that that on the lo localizer. If it if it's orange, it means it hasn't got a localizer, so it doesn't know where the waypoint is. Uh, the reason you put in a course as well is there's hundreds, over oh, thousands and thousands of different localizers and uh, VOR points and all that sort of stuff. So if the reason you need to put a course in is because it's got to know that that's where it is. So it's got to know that the, the, that uh, that's where it's looking for the localizer. So it only really needs to look in one a certain place, not loads. And you can see these are a bit of cloud animations. I bet you guys probably want me to go outside for that would be aircraft. It would make it a bit easier if I knew that I could trust it. As uh, easy docks just loading up the outside of the aircraft. The reason it always does this that it's not instantly loaded is because it actually only has a cockpit loaded when you're in the flight deck, so. Come on, load. That now when I go in here it'll also try and load the inside, which is uh Oh god, I hope I haven't broke it or something. It is just the ah there we go, that's much better. <coughs> so we can see this uh wow, look at that. Pretty incredible. You can see the amount of little turbulence and stuff just coming off off the wing. You can see how relatively unaerodynamic it is. Very nice indeed. Well sir. Uh, see the pressure now of the, the wing moving up ever so slightly. As I think most normal planes will have, it's just to see the wing flexing a little bit. As I think a normal plane would have, it's just it's a little bit like it still has speed brakes, I'm not going to use them, but it still has speed brakes and all that sort of stuff. It's just a bit more basic and simple, if you like. Get back into the copy right, I'm going to. I'm going to get to 10,000. I'm going to at least attempt to fix my issues, right? So. Altitude definitely not going to work. I have that like so. Right, it's working. Good. I'm going to put full power out just because we had that slight hiccup. Right, there we go. Much better. Much, much better. Again, we're going to stick it on to full power. We're going to climb at about 1,800, 2,000 or so. Uh, a little bit more forward. Just going to gradually move it forward. So I'm not going to do all, all in one hit, if you like. Going 180 knots, so we're probably going slower than you're imagining. I've got like a little information screen, so... Every time I drag that thing forwards, you can see this thing should change. Remember, we dragged it back a load because I was trying to get it to work. Still going up a bit, so it's okay. We can stabilize it. Actually, over 10,000 now, so we can really uh, build up the speed. We're going to hit our uh, waypoint fairly soon as well. Seaford, there we go. Going to hit it in about 12 nautical miles. Going to move that down again. A little bit more. Once we have a good balance, then we can uh, start to relax a little bit more. We're going to be flying at about 22, 21, 21,000 feet. This plane will fly much higher. It'll fly uh, above 30,000. I didn't actually read up on that. I should have. However, it is a, uh, a transatlantic, uh, transatlantic commercial airliner, uh, the original sort of. Uh, 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 it is an American plane, 
Aquas being Boeing, it's uh, it is American, um, or at least it was introduced as a American airliner. Uh, Pan Am was the first uh, uh, first sort of company to really build up a da- uh, a database, if you like. Um, yeah, I guess you could call it a database um, of this type of aircraft. Anyway. We're now coming up to our altitude. I'm going to show you one VOR change, and then I'm going to pause re- or stop recording. It's been about 35 minutes already. I don't want to bore you guys for too long. And I don't want this file to be too big either. <laughs> there we go. Much better. We've got a little bit more a bit more stable uh, climb now. We're now going to move it up a touch. I can oh I can actually still turn left and right. I would just leave it like that. Two six five. Uh, not sure what our overspeed is. We don't want to be going too much faster than three fifty ish knots. Right, we're gonna, we've we've just about hit our um, our BOR point. We're two point five miles away. It means we can now change it to the next one. Is one fifteen point eight. One fifteen point eight. There we go. Right then. Now, this is where it becomes a little bit more interesting because now we can't actually move up and down. Really, we don't really have that much control of that. Uh, I know we're going to go left. I also know that the course should be. Let me find out. <laughs> uh, one four one. <coughs> so we're just going to set up our course to one four one. Now, at the moment, it's not got the localizer, so we're manually flying it roughly to where we should be. And now we're going to straighten out at nineteen thousand feet. Uh, so let's uh, just above 20,000 feet now so let's turn that on and you'll now notice that the airplane will maintain this altitude it's a relatively clever uh, uh, altitude system Uh, it's not like today of course now you get a little bit more uh, or just out of a perfect point to reset our altimeter as well um, so now you'll notice that's not actually green. It'll turn green. I'm actually going to pause the recording, but that's going to turn green fairly soon. Um, when that turns green, um, that means that um, it'll follow that localizer. Otherwise, we're pretty much manually flying it. It's not quite as manual as you might think. Um, it'll pretty much maintain a course you want it to go go at. Um, so we're just turning it left and right a little bit just to adjust it basically we are at the moment pretty much on a perfect course our heading is uh, one four uh, one four f- about one four zero to one four two ish of course um, reading our heading off this bit here so that's five. That's yeah. You, you get the point. So I'm reading it off here. Oh now what's this? Doesn't really matter. Uh, just going to turn right a little bit. Now I'm also going to turn up the sensitivity of the VOR so we can get a slightly better. So if I press and hold like that. It starts to go right, and that's just going to give us a slightly better, slightly stronger signal. I'm just going to turn up to about there. Oh, that's actually full. A bit less. There you go. That's uh, just going to give us a slightly stronger signal. And now we're going to reduce the power to about 80%. And I'm now going to stop this first part of the recording. Uh, join me next time as we sort of plan our descent into Paris. I'm going to be flying very much manual descent. I'm going to be using that. Uh, autopilot heading feature and we're also going to use an ILS yes this thing will do an ILS landing sort of
But uh, join me in that video and see me next time fire landing in El Paris. Goodbye.